What's going on fellas? We're doing a quick little experiment on graphitic carbon nitride here. Some people are saying this stuff can absorb hydrogen like crazy. So today we're going to be looking into that. I've made a little experimental test bottle here out of an aluminum oxygen bottle. We're going to put some graphitic carbon nitride inside of this thing and we're going to pump hydrogen and oxygen gas down this center spire we see here, this siphon spout I guess you could say. That's where the hydrogen gas is going to enter into the substance, the substrate, whatever you want to call it. And um, we are going to run a torch that is connected in series with this little setup to see if the hydrogen flame changes at all. This is a pure hydrogen flame with just oxyhydrogen straight out of the torch. Okay, so here's the setup. I got it connected to a flashback arrestor that's also going to act as a filter because we are likely going to get some dust coming out of this thing. I'm not going to be using this monster for the experiment. It's just too much gas. I've been kind of using it for a gun rack lately because it's right here by the door. But other than that, we'll get back to this soon. We are going to be uh, running my torch for this test. I have an air conditioner in place and a fan because we're going to be running this thing for quite a while. I was thinking maybe um, I should run it for at least a half an hour just to know for sure we put enough hydrogen into this thing. We should get four grams of hydrogen stored in this tank. 4.2 and two grams of hydrogen. Let me hold on this is kind of hard to think. I need some of you chemistry guys to help me out. Insane Tuna if you're out there brother Hook me up on some intel here. Hydrogen's kind of complex. It's confusing to me because I'm new to chemistry um, as far as some of these extreme details are concerned. Hydrogen is usually in diatomic form, but the monoatomic hydrogen atom, or just a single atom, I don't even know if that's the proper terminology, a single mole weighs two grams, I believe, which is 22.4 liters at STP. That's one mole. Now, one mole of hydrogen diatomic gas, or just one mole of hydrogen gas, um, I think that's two grams, and, and the other one's one gram. I'll have to double check that. This should hold 42 liters of hydrogen inside that uh, material. I'm gonna have to do the math. Um, I probably should do some sleeping before I uh, do all this mental math and. I'm going to have to re correct it all in editing. So here we go. I'm going to hook this back up to the torch. And we should observe a notable difference in the flame because of the absence of hydrogen. We should see a very pronounced oxidizing cone. I'm just going to kind of set the torch here. And I'm going to fire it up and I'm going to let it run for a while to cycle all the air out. because About 13 amps. 1500 watts Okay, we got some air blasting out of there and she is breathing some muck You can see the little water droplets are capturing the dust I knew I'd have to get a filter in here. I just ain't got time to jack with it right now so I think it's time to go ahead and start trying to light it if it's diluted with a little bit of air no big deal let me get some safety glasses on. Well, hell, this thing ain't gonna blow up. It's freaking solid steel. Maybe getting some dust in there. It is a uh, yellower flame this time around. I can tell you that. So technically this material in the tank should be absorbing the hydrogen. The flame does appear to be smaller, guys. I mean, I don't know that I'd call that more oxidizing or not. I think what we'll do, guys, is uh, it's 11.54 p.m. I'm going to leave this flame just run and keep an eye on it. Okay, so the torch is running basically to act as a flare. We don't want a buildup of combustible gases in this place. So when we see a change in the flame, we'll shut the test down 
and we're going to reweigh the compound. Now, however, there is a problem here <clears throat> that I've just realized. I may have to dry this under a light heat. You know, say uh, 100 Celsius. Because we're pumping a wet gas into this compound. So when I go to weigh it, obviously it's going to take on a moisture content, whether it's hydroscopic or deliquescent, right? I mean, some of you chemists help me out if you think my theory is right on this. Even if it is just vapor pressure water, even if this is a hydroscopic material, it still may accumulate some particles of water that are going to show up on the scale. I do have some silica gel beads that we could run on the second test, but I don't at the moment have a container and some plumbing available that I that I know of. I'm going to look for a piece, but that's where we're at for now. This, when hydrogen diffuses into these materials, um, it tends to heat up, as far as I know. I could be wrong. I'm also curious about the diffusion behavior inside of this tank as far as the gas is actually missing. Um, we may get something, uh, some type of rat holing effect where we boil a channel and gas just passes through an open channel rather than sieving through the material. So I may want to, at the very bottom of the tank, place some like molecular sieve type material or try and turn this stuff into beads I wonder if we can turn it into like vitrify it I wonder what type of things we can do to this stuff and it still retain its hydrogen absorbing characteristic <laughs> Yep. Every word that you are, and every deed that you get the consequence of an act, it is also the cause of another thing. Did you do a link between something that made you do or now let's weigh the product and see how wet it got. Hopefully it seems dry still, but I have a feeling it picked up more moisture than it did hydrogen based on the way that flame acts. Come on, gold rush. Come on, big money. We're going for a thousand ounces this month. Now we had 42 grams. I think my memory kind of sucks. It's not a good sign. Well, maybe it is. Hopefully, that's not moisture, like I said. It could just be water. It's exceedingly dry feeling. It does not feel moist at all. I'm going to give this thing a tap. I'm going to set the camera down. Okay, so we're at 43 grams. Um, it may just simply be a situation where we need to pressurize it. Let's do a quick little experiment here. Um, see if it will burn because it has hydrogen in it. I'm just going to take a little bit here. The hydrogen torch, the flame velocity is so high, I would just blow it away. So... I'm going to use this. Even that's too much. Okay, nothing fancy. Metal hydride will burn. Okay. So there you have it. Uh, I'm going to try and cook this stuff again in a different type of furnace under different conditions. 
We also still have to test the pressurization theory. We may have to pressure this tank up. I do have the equipment to do that. So that's going to be the next phase. I would say probably nothing interesting happened here. We'll have to see. Um, I guess the next thing we can do, see how many grams of hydrogen we may have absorbed. And then we're going to heat this tank up and see if any gas comes out of it.